The transformation layer allows you to keyframe a transformation of a drawing, an animation or a video. That way you can move drawings or animations very quickly with a system of keyframes and curves. When you tap on this icon, you create a transformation layer which is directly linked to the past current layer. Here I have three drawing layers and if I select the three layers and I tap on the transformation icon, the transformation layer will be linked to the three drawing layers. When a layer is linked to a transformation layer, you can see it with a diamond icon right next to the icon of the layer. If you want to unlink the layers from a transformation layer, simply select them and drag them out of it. And now you see the number next to the transformation layer icon is zero. It means that there is zero layers in it. And if I want to put them back, I simply select the layers and drag them into it. When a transformation layer is active, you cannot draw on the drawing layer. To be able to edit your drawing layers, you will need to disable the transformation layer with the eye icon. And now, you can freely draw on your drawing layers. Simply enable it by tapping on the eye icon. The transformation layer uses the same system as the transformation tool, which means that you have a transformation box here which you can move around to transform your drawings. If you hold one finger down, you will be able to snap the transformation box to guidelines. When you transform, holding one finger down allows you to keep the ratio of the transformation box. By transforming, I created animation keyframes, which I can access with the curve mode. On the left side, I can see the transformation values of the keyframes. When there is a diamond icon, it means there is a keyframe, so I have keyframes for position and scale. And for now, I can only see the scale X and Y in the curves. And to display other curves, I simply have to tap on the eyes next to the value I want to display. I can see that for the rotation, there is no diamond icon. That means there is no keyframe. For the moment, I don't have anything animated because for an animation to occur, I need to have keyframes on at least two different frames. So if I go to the end here and I move my ball down here, I get a movement. In here, I can see where the sheets of my layers are. To select a keyframe, Tap on the icon, which displays an action panel on top of the timeline. If you want to select more than one keyframe, double tap and drag, and all the keyframes contained in the rectangle will be selected. If you want to move your keyframes, you can drag them around like this, but it will also change the values. If you want to move them only horizontally, so simply move them to another frame of the timeline. Hold two fingers and it will only move horizontally. You can also move them when the curves are closed, like this. To copy-paste a keyframe, select the keyframe, copy, go to the frame where you want to paste it, and paste. So here, if I want to get the ball smaller, I just hold one finger here and it should change it for the whole animation. Because I only have one keyframe here, it will not animate. I can even delete the keyframe. It will keep the scale value. In order to reset the value, I simply tap on the reset icon here. So now I want to create ease-ins and ease-outs. To do so, I select all the keyframes and then I choose a tangent value. So here it eases in into the movement, slows down and slowly goes up like this. By tapping on the keyframe, I display the tangents. So here I can grab the tangent I want to change 
If I only want to change the one on the left, I put my finger down and it will only change this one. Let's make a movement like this. And you can try different values of tangents. So this one is linear tangent, so I won't have any tangent to move. This one is a low one. This is medium and this is strong. I will just stick with the medium. And here I will just raise it up a little bit, like this. And I'll simply remove the position X which created a new keyframe here as I'm not moving the position horizontally but only vertically. So now I want to change the size of the ball and create a squash and stretch. To do so, I will be going to change the value scales X and Y. When the ball is up, it is slightly like this and then it touches the floor. And here I will move the pivot point because I will want it to squash from the bottom and I can snap the pivot point with one finger down like this. When you change the pivot point, it changes on the whole animation. And now I know that here it will squash slightly like this, not too much. And right here but it is stretched until it touches the floor. So it will touch, stay on the floor, and then rise up again. So I'm going to copy these four free frames until this point. So it just stretches and touches the floor, squashes, and here it will stretch Again, like this, but maybe not right away, so I'm just going to move this till this point so it stretches still up in the air. Let's play this. And I'm going to make it last a little less time on the floor. the lines here. I want to make them rotate, but I want them to be the only ones to rotate. So I'm going to create a transformation layer just for it. I'm just going to disable the other one and only focus on this one. So here, I need to know where my pivot point is because when I make a rotation, the pivot point is very important. In this case, I placed my drawings in the center of the canvas. So by default, my pivot point is at the center of the canvas, so it is at the center of my drawings too. And now, if I rotate, it will rotate properly. If my pivot point were to be somewhere else, then it would rotate accordingly. So I want my rotation to make one turn. To do that, I can either place a keyframe like this, so this place is a keyframe where you are in the timeline. If I do that, it will place a keyframe here. And if I want to remove it, I can either select it and delete it, or tap on the keyframe in the values one more time. If I go to the last frame and I turn like this, it will make a rotation like this. So if I want to be quick and very precise, I can go to the end and simply choose the number of turns I want to make. So the number on the left is the number of rotations that are performed and the number on the right are the degrees that are added to these rotations. So I can make as many turns as I want, but I just want one here. And I can even choose to go on the other way with a negative number of turns. And now my basketball is bouncing and rotating at the same time. Now I'm going to focus on the tools on the left. The first tool is the bypass. So 
You can choose to transform your drawings with the fingers, but if you don't want that, activate the bypass and you will be able to zoom in and out with the fingers and change the position also with the finger, but not to use the two fingers which are made to zoom in and out. In this case, you use the handles here. Those two icons allow you to move forward to the next keyframe and backwards to the previous keyframe. Those are undo and redo. And these icons are like the ones in the transformation tool. This is flip horizontally, flip vertically, and the transformation will always take the pivot point into consideration. So if I flip again, it will just flip according to the pivot point. And the last one is the reset. It will just reset the transformation to its initial position, scale and rotation. So here you can see that I added a shadow and changed the size a little bit. I want to change these transformation layers into drawing layers. And to do so, I go to the menu here and I choose the flatten merge icon. And it will flatten all the layers contained inside the transformation layer and change it into a frame by frame animated drawing layer. This is good if you have plenty of layers and transformation layers and that you are missing performances. Just flatten your transformation layers and you will gain in performance. When you flatten a transformation layer, all the layers still exist. They are just disabled. You can either delete them or close them with the arrow here, which hides all the children layers contained into the transformation layer. And now I have only two layers in my timeline. Now I'm going to tell you more in detail about the pivot points and to do so I'm going to create three flowers. So I will be using the transformation tool which is here, which is different than the transformation layer which is down here. And now I'm going to copy this image, which is in a separate layer, and paste it. And I'm moving the pivot point at the center, and now I can duplicate this image everywhere around the circle. And if I put one finger down, then I can snap the image to 15 degrees increment. And now I paste. And I will always paste the first one I copied. So now I'm going to merge these two layers together. Now I'm going to call it flower one. And I'm going to duplicate the layer twice. And now I have three flowers, I can move them together like this. And now I'm going to use the transformation layer and show you how the pivot point works. This icon here means that the pivot point is a global pivot point. It takes the same pivot point for all three layers which is here. If I move it here, I made a rotation. It would move all three flowers together. So here I'm going to simply rotate one turn. So my flowers are rotating together. So now if I change the global pivot point to the multiple pivot point, I can use one pivot point per layer. To change the pivot point, because now it is not changed individually yet, I need to go into the curves mode and change the pivot point per layer. So I'm going to choose flower 1 and place the pivot point at the center of the box. The same with flower 2.
and with flower three. And now the rotation is made individually on each layer. And all that with just one icon. So here I have only one layer and I will link it to a transformation layer. I can make a transformation here. And if I decide to duplicate the transformation layer, I can either duplicate it alone or with his child or children, the layers contained inside of it. By tapping on this icon, we'll duplicate only the transformation layer. The transformation will be there, but it will be empty, there is no children layers inside it. And if I duplicate with all the children, I will have exactly the same two layers duplicated. In the hierarchy of the layers, the transformation layer is the parent and the drawing or video layer will be the child. A transformation layer can also be child of another transformation layer, but only transformation layers can be parents. That way I can create several levels of hierarchy with the transformation layers.